As we gather as a Christmas people, as a people of faith, let us begin our prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. We hear today from Luke's Gospel on this Christmas morning. And Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. Mary kept all these things and reflected on them in her heart. We live in a very fast-paced society, much faster than when I was growing up, much, much faster. Before computers, things, things weren't as fast. And I wonder sometimes if we don't cheat ourselves out of reflecting, you know, just kind of sitting, pondering, kind of thinking about things, you know, and see, see where they are, see where the Lord's in it. And so that's the point of today's gospel is, to breathe in, to breathe out, to live in the present moment. You can't change the past and you have no control over the future. And that's what reflecting is all about, being in the present moment, this day, this place, and the blessings that surround us, the gift of the Christ child. That offers us a new hope. And so let us seek forgiveness in the Lord when we have not slowed down, reflected, and realize the blessings of our lives in the here and now. Lord Jesus, Son of God and Son of Mary, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, Son of God and Son of Mary, you are the Prince of Peace. Christ have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, Son of God and Son of Mary, you are the way that leads to everlasting life. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, bring us to an everlasting life. Amen. Let us praise the Lord in song.
we pray, Almighty, for God, that as we are bathed in this new radiance of your incarnate word, the light of faith, which illuminates our minds, may also shine through in our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See the Lord proclaims to the ends of the earth. Say to daughter Zion, your savior comes. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. They shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And you shall be called frequented, a city that is not forsaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, when the kindness and generous love of God our Savior appeared, not because of any righteous deeds we had done, but because of his mercy, he saved us through the bath of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he richly poured out on us through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that we might be justified by his grace and become heirs and hope of eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the angels went away from them to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go then to Bethlehem to see the thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message they had been told about this child. All who heard were amazed by what had been told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Trying to think. Today's Monday, right? <laughs> so I got a call either yesterday. We're so mixed up because we had Sunday, Monday, you know, as a priest anyways. So I got a call on Saturday. We were supposed to do Christmas dinner at family member's house. And they can't because this COVID thing's going around again. And so I, it, it, I said, I'll do it because it just works out that way. Little did I know. To, you know, you got, you got to do some extra organizing, right, at the rectory there. And so I took the turkey out of the freezer. And this might have happened yesterday. I'm so mixed up, I don't know. So I had to make sure the turkey was thawed out. No, it was Saturday. The turkey was thawed out. So this morning, I thought it was thawed out, right? This morning, I take the turkey out because I had 8 o'clock. And I thought, well, if I get up at a quarter to 7, you know, quick shower, breakfast, take the dog out, get the turkey in the oven, we'll be good to go, because it's like four, four and a half hours. So I take it out, I'm taking the package out, and it's kind of frozen. I thought, God, not today. I got eight o'clock mass, I can't be late, it's Christmas. So what do I do? I get hot water, put a little bit, okay, it's not that bad. Boom, boom, take the gizzards and the neck and all that out, boom. Turkey bag, I'm a turkey bag person. Flour, hurry up, boom, boom. Put the tie in there, do it. Press the buttons for the oven and put the turkey in. And I get to mass and I thought, oh no, I didn't hear the beep, 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 which means the oven's on, right? And I'm thinking, four hours, that's all I got, you know, because they're coming at one. I thought, okay, God, save me. So I'm sitting in the chair, and I know this happens, Saul, you even the people watching this. You come to church, and you're thinking about stuff. You know, and some people come to confession and say, well, I'm, I, you're human. It's okay. <laughs> you know, it's okay to be human in church. So I'm thinking, God, I'm not being disrespectful. I said, okay, Lord. And I'm talking to God, so maybe I can get away with it, right? So I'm saying, God, is it on or off? You know, and so what I did was, I'm sitting in presider's chair or standing in presider's chair and I'm reflecting on what I did because I was going 240. I didn't, you know, it's kind of like the road runner, you know. I didn't have time to reflect to figure out whether I did at the moment. I wait until later. And so I got back. And the minute, this is so cool, the minute I opened the door, I knew all was well. Do you know how? I could, you could smell it. It's like, oh, thank you, Jesus. She's cooking. It's cooking. It's all good. In life, especially today, in this modern age, I wonder if we really take the time necessary 
to breathe in and out and reflect. What, what, well, what's, what, what's this whole thing about reflecting? Well, well Mary did it in Luke's gospel. Uh, the, the shepherds did it a little bit in Luke's gospel, a little bit before what we hear today. Reflecting. Well, what, 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 what is reflecting? What does it mean? It allows us to see again the things that just happened to us. To think about them, <laughs> mull over them, and learn from them. Right? So uh, let me give you an example. Um, so yesterday, uh, my other sister came and helped me set up. And I was reflecting on it last night. I says, oh, thank you, God. Right? Sometimes we presume and instead of being thankful, thank you, God, that she came with my nephew to help me, reflecting on that. We don't take time to reflect. I really believe that. Even I could use a lot more reflecting, you know, and that's what Mary and the angels or the, uh, the shepherds were doing. They were reflecting on the experience. A couple weeks ago, I was in the car with somebody I was driving and the person saw my blind spot and said, watch out. It's like, oh, my God, I didn't see that. You know? And you reflect. You're like, whoa. And you kind of. And you think, okay, thank you, for, thank you for my blind spot. How often do we reflect, see the reality, and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The shepherds. Interesting. They had what we call, what I would call, a mystical experience. The shepherds had this experience of God through the angels, as we learn in Luke's gospel, a little bit before what we hear today. And they're touched by this mystical experience of God talking about a child to be born. And so what we hear today is the shepherds come to find the child and they don't quite understand it because they said, well, we've come to find this thing. And it's like, well, Jesus isn't a thing. Jesus is a baby. Why didn't you say baby in the scriptures? They didn't understand. They were looking, for, they didn't know what they were searching for, but they were searching. And once they found the child, you know, they understood. And Mary didn't quite understand, but went along with God's plan. And then she's reflecting, and then the miracle of her baby. How many mothers look at your child that first time and see the miracle of your child, the gift of God, and you reflect on it? And it may even bring tears to your eyes. Of course, you might be in so much pain, you might not be crying. You know, who knows? You know, Yeah, so some of the women are shaking their heads. I'm probably even at home. Isn't it interesting how Jesus, or not Jesus, how God chose the, chose the shepherds, chose the shepherds to send his angel to for the message? Jesus came for the outcast. Shepherds were outcast. The shepherds were despised. The shepherds were considered dishonest. Yet, they were the ones who saw the Christ child. They were the ones who heard the heavenly host and had that mystical experience. They were the ones to praise and announce peace. Perhaps we could call these shepherds the first evangelist. They were the first to spread and to tell the good news, the least likely. So the question for all of us, would anyone believe their testimony? Because sometimes we get the messenger mixed up with the message. We judge the message by the messenger instead of paying attention to the message, no matter who you get it from. We can learn from those we think we least likely can learn from. So we have to remember the message and not always focus on the messenger. You know the example, uh, don't kill the messenger. <laughs> don't focus on the messenger. Focus on the message. 
And so that was that whole thing with the shepherds. The shepherds were the ones to tell those around them of their experience. You ever have that experience in life, good, bad, or indifferent? You tell everybody. That's what their experience was. See, in the Catholic faith, this is where the change has taken place. We got to begin to share our faith and tell others of the experience of Christ in our lives in a way that's doable and comfortable for us wherever we're at on the journey of faith. We reflect today on the gift of the Christ child. The gift of the Christ child is given to us. What do we do with it? Do we reflect on it? Do we ponder on it? Do we try to understand it? That God came as a human, because he loves us so much, as a child. To understand us, to be with us, to show us love. So last night after um, afternoon masses, um, I was at the rectory, and I got sucked into probably one of the most famous Christmas movies of all time. And I bet you'll guess what it is. It's a wonderful, yeah, Jimmy Stewart. I love it. I just got, it's like someone grabbed me and went, Droom! I got sucked into it. And so as I'm watching it, and I already know it, but every time I watch it, I learn something new. And so as I'm watching it, I'm thinking to myself, okay, here's the deal. Clarence the angel is supposed to, is it Clarence? Yeah, Clarence. Clarence is supposed to, help George Bailey see the reality of his life. And so Clarence is, you know, trying his darndest because George says, well, I wish I never was born. And Clarence says, okay. And Snow stops, his, his, he had cut his lip, lip stops bleeding. And then he has these experiences and he doesn't understand it. He's unable to reflect. He's unable to get it. You know, and, and this experience has happened. This one doesn't know him and this one. And because he never lived, this event had happened and that event happened. And these people weren't saved in World War II. And it goes on and on. Where he begins to self-reflect is when he looks into his wife Mary's eyes. He looked, they looked right at one another. And she was so fearful. She didn't know who he was because he didn't exist. He got it. He self-reflect. And at that moment, do you remember what he said? Do you remember who he talked to? He talked to God. God, help me. God, help me. I want my life back. And with that, boom, the snow starts. Isn't it interesting, the snow? It's almost like a purification. You know when we do sprinkling right at Easter? It's kind of like that. It was the purification and then everything comes back together again. The taxi cab drive know, knows him. And then he's so grateful because his life isn't all that bad after all. Take some time to reflect. You know, if you got some time tonight, you know, put on your Christmas tree. It kind of sick. Take a couple of minutes and say, Lord, help me to be grateful for the gift of life that you've given me and those around me. And help me to work through the rough spots. The Lord sent his son to this earth, not because we're so bad. I really believe in my heart of hearts. Why he sent us Jesus is to show us that we're good people, but he calls us to be great people. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, to God from God. We have not made the presentation of the Father, all things to be. He came down from heaven, and by the power of the Spirit, was gone into the Virgin Mary. For our sake, he was crucified under a punch of Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the world. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. On this joyous morning, we celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, which means God is with us, assured of God's closeness to us wherever we're at on the journey of life. We now offer our prayers for those in the world, our nation, and community of faith. For the church, that we may be the light to the world in a way that we proclaim by word and deed the gospel message of our Lord Emmanuel, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations, that they may lay down their arms and work tirelessly to build a world that is forever peaceful, following the example of the Prince of Peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whom this time of year is difficult due to grief, stress, or family tension, that they may find comfort in the knowledge that God remains with us through our hardships, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all military, police, firefighters, and first responders, may they be kept safe from all harm as they serve and protect us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That life may be treasured at every stage, from conception to natural death, and at every point in between, and in every person, no matter their stage in life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, our families and friends, and our neighbors, that this holy season of Christmas may be filled with love, joy, and peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all whom we remember today at Mass, especially all the parishioners and their loved ones living and deceased, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick, especially Dolores Wagner, Joan Klein, Denise Chicanis, George Lulo, Dennis Martin, Ken Zell, Dave Mariotti, and Robert Greenlee, and all those listed in our parish bulletin and book of prayer intentions, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our dearly departed loved ones, especially Peter Quadraki and Virginia Jean O'Leary, and Joan Dwyer, that they may rest in the peace of Christ, we pray. For all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray. We offer up our prayers through Christ our Lord.
and my brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on this feast of this all-filled mystery, though invisible, in his own divine mystery and nature, he has appeared visible in ours. And so with the angels and the saints, we praise you as a joyful celebration acclaim. said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Bishops, with all other bishops, 
with priests and deacons and your entire people. Grant that the faithful of the church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remembering our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead, whose faith you alone. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection. Give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her spouse, St. Joseph, with the Blessed Apostles, Martyr, St. Catherine of Alexandria, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
A wonderful Christmas. Good morning to everybody. Oh, thank you, thank you. And we have, as part of a little gift to you, we have a little basket of uh, prayer pamphlets. Uh, you feel free to take one with you. They're on the table in the vestibule. Uh, we also have just a few uh, plucky uh, uh, Christmas wafers left. Uh, if you have not used it with your family yet, uh, we have also our 2024 calendars available. Uh, next Monday, you know, is the uh, January 1st, which is the Solemnity of Mary, the Mother of God. And it's a, a holy day as well as New Year's Day. And we will have an anticipated Mass next Sunday at 4 and also then Masses on New Year's Day on 8.30 and 10. Uh, if you've not made your uh, special Christmas gift to your parish, extra envelopes are at the church exits. Uh, thank you for your generosity. And on behalf of Father Fred and myself, we'd like to wish all of you a very, very joyous, blessed Christmas. And as the wonder of Christmas surrounds us, may your spirit be renewed with special joy at the, at the joy and the miracle of his birth. Let us pray. Grant, O oh merciful God, that just as the Savior of the world Born this day, he's the author of divine generation for us, so that he may be the giver even of immortality, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So think about the importance of reflecting on the experience of the gift of faith, of the gift of family, of the gift of relationships. I mean, we sit back and think about it, we realize how blessed we are. And we, in, in that reflection, seek the Lord's guidance in some of those rough spots. The thought for the week. The peace of the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you till we gather again in prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and proclaim the good news. <laughs>